Welcome back to follow the second episode of staging the text with the focus on analyzing to be able to stage it. Now we have a lot of new knowledge hopefully and we will take some more steps further with the second text that is a short story or a tale. Now I will show you how you can create a script from a short story, I will add some more elements to focus on. In the last episode, we had a look at uh, we had a look at uh, what, who, when, and where. Now we will focus on themes, conflicts, turning points, level of conflicts, and uh, I will also show you uh, a way to think with the help of a dramaturgical model, a classical dramaturgical model. So the monkey and the tortoise is the text, and I will let you read it. have the short story about the monkey and the tortoise. We will now turn the story into a script that can be staged. I will use the elements that we went through in the last episode, what, who, when and where, that will focus on the actions, the lines and the objects in use. I can do that without doing any f uh, further analysis. The part, that part will come later. The number of scenes are decided by the change of time and place. That is the first way I will show you how you divide the text. Here is now a script that is ready for staging. What I have removed is words that describe how characters are or how they are acting not what they are doing but i have removed how they are acting and maybe also why they are acting so here you have a script with the first scene 
and inside of brackets you have the stage directions and then you have the line monkey tortoise I had to add some things that is in the description in the story about the tortoise and her 11 children for instance so there you have the first scene and here you have the second scene starting with the monkey sits on a branch with his tail dangling down over the road and it ends with they start to run away to the judge so there starts the third scene so here you have a, a new place but it's the same day and the same time as uh, the second scene and the third scene ends with the two leaving the office after the judge has decided the sentence and that's the end of the story so now you have a clean manuscript with lines and stage directions now you can start to analyze the text what what is happening what is said what kind of objects are in use so we start to focus on what is happening the actions because, as I said before, in the first episode, the Greek word drama means to act. And the Greek word theater means to watch. Now we start with the actions. After reading the manuscript the first time, and naive or the neutral reading, we are creating the base for the analysis. A very short, objective, description of the actions in the form of verbs this protocol can also be called a police protocol it should be dry in its form based on facts and without assumptions like like a police report should be what do we observe of actions so we have the tortoise buying a bag of rice she walk on the road and stop by the roadside leaving the bag she gathered dry wood. She returned to the road. A monkey sit on her bag of rice. The tortoise claimed the bag. The monkey refuses. The tortoise offers money for a, for a pound of rice. The monkey, monkey re reject. The tortoise walk away. That's the first scene with the first actions. The monkey sit on a branch over the road, dangling his tail down. The turtles pass, see the tail, grab hold of it. She claims the tail. The monkey pulls his tail. The turtles will not let go. The monkey moves to the court. The turtles or she follow him by the tail. The judge sit in his chair. The monkey want the judge to give back his tail. The tortoise want the judge to give her back the rice. The judge ask where the rice is now. The monkey slap his tummy. The judge call the policeman. They bring a shopping board and chop the monkey's tail off. The judge sentenced the tortoise to sell the, the tail back for the price of a bag of rice. Whenever the monkey wants his tail back, he sends them away. That means the judge sends them away. So that is uh, like an objective description of what is happening in this story. This is the first part, and it could be a, a little bit hard. Uh, and the reason is that Maybe you have already started to transform it with your assumptions or you having some kind of darlings that you see. You see things that is not there. So let's start thinking like a police officer when you are doing this. Uh, so let your assumptions or darlings come a little later and more conscious, not really now. So what do you see now when you read the story? We can put the manuscript aside. We can look only at this action protocol or police protocol. We only have this to relate to now. We have to start answering who 
where, when, and the objects in use. You don't assume and don't guess and do not add anything that is not there. Starting what everyone can agree upon. Write down the answers to the questions. So the questions are when, where, who, what, and objects. So now we have the fragments. Who? We have the tortoise, we have the monkey, we have the judge, we have the policeman. Where? I have in brackets put work and shop. That might be something you want to keep in mind that she's working hard to get her money and to go to the shop and buy rice. Otherwise we have the roadside, we have the road, we have the branch and we have the court. Okay, when is difficult to decide? It's an open option, so that means you have a lot of possibilities to create the when uh, in whatever way you want it to be. Here you have objects. The reason why objects is they are important is because most conflicts they, they can actually appear around objects. In this case it's very, very clear. So you have the bag of rice, you have the dry wood, the tortoise collects in the in the forest you have the tail you have a share you have a shopping board and you probably have a sharp tool because the tail is cut off now the fourth step in this process starting with the action protocol it's to talk about the theme and the first thing is an open question what can what can the whole series of action be about? S to go through the action uh, protocol and look at the ba basic circumstances, that mean what you saw, who, when, where, and what. And discuss with yourself or in a group of people what can be told with this story. So list the possible thematic words. You can say the story is about possessions, or it's about theft. It's about material thing versus body. Is it about poverty? Is it about the unfair laws? Is it about the fight to survive? Is it about the, the boomerang effect? Uh, that is like a few examples of possible themes, and this is important because when you start to decide your theme it will decide everything what you continue to work with. Let's see what happens now if we focus on a theme that is about unfair laws. This staging will now focus on the fact that the tortoise is a victim in any way. She will never have her property back, the bag of rice, even if the monkey is sentenced to lose a part of his body or if he goes to jail. It will not feed her family. So this staging will take its perspective and the focus on this story about the, the tragedy for the tortoise. If we have a theme boomerang effect with this story, then the staging we focus on the morally wrong action of the monkey to steal and the belief that destiny hits back on him. What goes around comes around. That means if you take something, you will be punished. And I hope you see this that the theme you decide, decide what you start to focus on. What you have is the action protocol. Then you decide your basic circumstances. You decide your theme after discussing possibilities. And then you see the consequences of your theme. So we are now ready to start with the phase two of the analyzing process. That means with the help of the theme, you can now close the text and focus on your interpretation of the story. The decision 
take the decisions taken in this uh, phase will make the whole rehearsing process very much smoother because everyone know what we are about to tell step 1 in phase 2 the fable with our decided theme we can start the construction of the fable we transform the action protocol into a readable story Note that you don't look at the script, you look only at what you have worked with, the action protocol and your theme. The theme is kind of a sunglasses or a funnel when you, when you narrow down the text of the fable step by step by deleting sentences or action that describes uh, events that are unimportant from your uh, theme. This is a kind of an example of a, of, a, of a fable. So you start with, this is a story about a monkey who finds an uh, abundant bag of rice on the road. Out from the forest, the tortoise comes, who claims the rice to be hers. The monkey does not accept to give her the rice. The tortoise gives up. One day, when the monkey sits on a branch, the tortoise grabs his tail and claims it to be hers. The monkey brings the matter and the tortoise to the court and the judge decides to cut his tail off. If he wants his tail back, he must give the tortoise a bag of rice. The judge tells them to leave the court. This is just an example out from one of the different themes that I suggested before. So maybe your understanding will be different. Well, because when you are using your theme, the fable will be written in another way. Uh, this example will focus on the injustice that many poor people face on a daily basis. I follow the protocol, but remove parts in it that did not support the theme that I have chosen. Now, phase two, step two, divide into scenes. Now you are using the fable, so forget about the police protocol. It has done its work already, so now you have a fable. Where in the text is there a change of time and place? Where in the text is the enter and the exit of characters? You number the scenes, one, two, and three, and so on. Forget about the author's idea about dividing the text because that is in the script. Now we are working with the fable. So, in the fable of the monkey and the tortoise, I have seen there is three scenes in the forest, on the road, on the road, under a branch, and at a court. Now you can create lines in the manuscript. So now you can go to the manuscript for a short period of time, uh, and you you make lines that show how you divide the text into different scenes. Phase two, closing the text, uh, step three. Now we have to look for the main conflict and uh, the turning point, the main turning point. So you have to ask yourself, what is the main conflict in the fable? Is it an external or internal conflict? What do I mean with that? I mean it's a social conflict or it's a psychological conflict. What is the outcome of the main conflict? That means we are focusing on the turning point. Write down the exact answers to the questions. Here you have the key to your next step. This is very important. Mark the place of main turning points, and, or main turning point rather, in the fable, and you can also do it in the script. For me, I will use this kind of sign when I'm marking the main turning point, a big X inside of a circle. So, just to clarify, what is a conflict? As I stated in the beginning, the will is superior to what is said. So the clash of the wills that you find in the fable is the conflict. Conflicts can be found on several levels. They can be found individual, a group, 
and the structural level. Uh, you can use this kind of matrix if you like, where you have conflicts from an individual point of view, where you can be in conflict with another uh, individual, you can be in conflict with a group, or you can be in conflict with the structure. The structure is what we sometimes use, we call it society, but it's an organization, uh, a level of organization. You can also be uh, have a conflict that is group to group, and you can have a conflict from one group uh, with the structure. And then you can have a conflict between two structures. So in this case, this is the conflict that I find, all of them. But of course, we have to focus on one major conflict. You have the monkey and the tortoise, and the conflict is about the rice. You have the tortoise and the monkey, and it's about the tail. You have the tortoise and the judge. You have the monkey and the judge. You have the monkey and maybe also the police officer. You can have a conflict between the police officer and the judge. Uh, there is another way to see that they are having internal conflicts or they, they have psychological conflict. There could be hesitation within the tortoise uh, what to do. The same goes for the monkey and the judge and the police officer. The structure in this story is represented by the judge and the police officer. The monkey and the tortoise can either be seen as a group or individual, depending on how you look upon it. The construction of my fable, as I showed, focuses on the monkey in conflict with the tortoise about his tail. But all other conflicts will be kept in mind and used in the staging process. Conflicts are the engine of theatre, so you have to take care of them instead of removing them. You have to add conflicts instead of removing. What is a turning point? The turning point is a time uh, in, in which a situation starts to change in an important way. A new direction of the plot, and it is always created by some kind of conflict or obstacle. The turning point is change of direction a new decision or an event that creates a new direction. We have several turning points in our story. If you look at it, in the same here, it has to do with the conflicts. The tortoise decides to search for wood, putting the, the bag of rice down. It's a turning point, uh, change of direction. She is on her way home, but she decides to pick some wood. The monkey decides to take the rice. The tortoise decides to fight to get the rice back. Now you have a new direction when the tortoise gives up the fight. Tortoise decides to take the tail of the monkey. The monkey decides to bring the case to court. The judge decides to let the policeman cut the tail off. The policeman cuts the tail off. Turning point. Again, everything here is turning points. And then you have the verdict of the judge. The main turning point that I have chosen now is the action to cut, cut the tail from the monkey. Because one rule is to keep the main turning point as close to the end as possible because you want it to be interesting for the audience to follow the story till until the main turning point and maybe a big surprise of course all other turnings or turning points can be kept in mind they are the elements that make the story swing so conflicts turning point is what we have to look for and sometimes to sharpen and add. So I want to show you a way to look at the development in a story. I call this the simplified dramaturgical model. 
Uh, the line that you are following that goes up is, of course, the intensity of the plot or the action. So the intensity is leading up to the main turning point in the circle, and then you have the last part of the play. So we divide it in beginning, middle, and end. And the rule is to try to keep the main turning point as close to the end as possible. You can also talk about the setup of the story, the confrontation, where you have the sharpening of the conflict, and you have the resolution. So this is a good model to have in mind when you are working with the process of analyzing, but also when you are building up with the actors uh, the story. Now we have come to the step four in phase two. We are closing the text. We have to choose the personal reading. The personal reading answers the question, what do we want to tell with this story? You have to formulate the reading in one sentence. It could be a statement or it could be a question. A little help to create a reading is to ask yourself, who do we want to tell the story to? Who do we sympathize with in the story? And now it's okay to start to decide exactly who, when, where, how, and why. You decide the style of acting or genre you want to use. Here is some examples from the tortoise and the monkey. What goes around comes around. Finders keepers. Society is not fair. Poverty leads to crime. First come the food, then we can talk and think about moral. Is it always wrong to use violence? Does the law protect poor people? Who is the loser and the winner? As you see, I have used a different kind of both, both statements and questions here. And I have used also statement that I might not believe in myself, but just to provoke, you can state something like finders keepers. So a reading can activate or provoke the spectator. This is often done by the use of questions or surprising statements. When you have decided your personal reading, you have now to decide who do we want them to be in the story and where do we want them to be in the story. It could be written forest, but maybe you want to change it to another place. And when do you want this to take place? So this is the given circumstances. From there, you can start to work with the set design. So you determine, decide the internal and the external environment. You make a drawing or a sketch. Internal is what you see on stage. External is what the actors or the characters refer to. So the external environment, what is outside that what we see on stage. The internal environment, it's what is visible to the audience. So what we have done now in this episode, we have closed the options. By deciding a theme, we have created the fable based on the theme. We have divided the script and the fable into scenes. We have decided the main conflict and main turning points. And we have formulated a personal reading. Now it's the time to go back 
to the script. That is the end of this second episode of Stating the Text, How to Analyze. Thank you.